Thank you for joining us today for our first ever Pack Expo Connects. My name is Kim Young. I am part of the marketing group here at Inland Packaging. For those of you who may not be familiar with Inland, I'll give you a quick overview. We are a family owned and operated label and packaging supplier. We have been in business for over 75 years working with small to medium brands as well as large national brands offering them quality innovative labels and packaging. So this ranges from cut and stack labels to pressure sensitive, shrink sleeve, end mold, and even some flexible packaging options. So now the reason we are here today is to talk about those quick wins for sustainable packaging. Our main presenter today is Trent Glendenny. He has been with Inland for over nine years. His current role is the packaging innovation engineer. Much of what Trent does on a daily basis is surrounded around sustainability, shrink sleeves, and then new product development. So today during our presentation, we will chat through some quick wins for sustainable packaging featuring one of our favorites, Pure Wash. As you can see on the side, there is a chat feature that you can utilize to submit some questions. So we are gonna do our best to save some time at the end of this presentation for Trent to answer some of the questions that you submit. For those that we are unable to get through, we will absolutely follow up after the live demo. You can also find Trent in our virtual showroom throughout the rest of the week. So if you have additional technical or sustainability focused questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to Trent or any other member of our Inland team. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Trent. Thanks for the great introduction, Kim. As Kim mentioned, today we'll be talking about packaging sustainability. Specifically, I'll be talking about labeling technologies that enable the recycling of PET packaging. However, before I dive into the details, I would like to first kind of have a discussion around the term sustainability. When you think about packaging sustainability, one thing that jumps to the front of everyone's mind is what's gonna happen at the end of the life of that given packaging. There's several options there. Obviously, no one wants their packaging to be going into the landfill, so we're looking to have them either be able to be recycled so they can be used again, composted so that they can become part of something else, or um, possibly be reused. However, there's several other aspects to consider when thinking about packaging sustainability. One is the definition of packaging, which it holds a product. And it's very important that the packaging is up to the job of holding whatever it's gonna hold. An extreme example of this is when you buy a flat screen TV and end up with what seems like a mountain of foam and corrugate. However, when you think about how much energy and materials go into producing a flat screen TV, it more than justifies the uh, material spent on packaging it to ensure that that TV is able to make it safely from the factory to your home to be put on your wall. On a less extreme case, the packaging we deal with day in and day out is for food products, consumer goods, that kind of thing. It's no less important that the packaging is up to the task of holding that product that it's gonna hold. However, it's important to make sure that the packaging isn't excessive in order to have the most sustainable possible package. Another aspect of that closely related is the transport and initial input costs to produce the packaging itself and to get that packaging from where it's produced to where it's gonna be filled and ultimately to the consumers. And this is an aspect where plastic in general um, and PET specifically can excel, especially compared to some other packaging types. This is also where I'd like to say, we're not saying plastic packaging is better than any other type of packaging. We're pro all forms of packaging. We just wanna today focus on plastic packaging, but we produce labels for all types of packaging, whether it's glass, aluminum, steel, um, or other types of plastics besides PET. But again, today, the label technology I want to talk to you about is specifically for PET. And where PET can be a more sustainable option is when you're able to produce that package in the same facility as you're then going to be filling. Um, something that's not as often achievable with glass or aluminum packaging, which often requires more equipment to manufacture. 
So with all that said, as I've mentioned several times, we'll be talking about PET uh, recyclability. Um, why we're focusing on PET is because it is the most highly recycled uh, plastic packaging uh, resin today at about 34% in the United States of the PET we produce being recycled every year. Um, this is an important number to focus on and I'll come back to it later. Uh, part of hitting that 34% number is having the label be able to separate from the PET package itself. One way to do that is to use a wraparound label which we produce um, as cut and stack film. However, for aesthetic purposes, it's often desirable to have a pressure sensitive label. Traditional pressure sensitive adhesives, permanent pressure sensitive adhesives are very well engineered and good at their jobs, which is unfortunate for the PET recycling process because what can happen is those labels, which are not PET, will stay stuck to the PET and cause it to have to be downcycled because it's not able to be recycled back into PET bottles as uh, with that label material stuck to it. What we have to offer is what we call Pure Wash, which is a pressure sensitive label that has all the aesthetic benefits of a traditional pressure sensitive label, but is also very friendly to the recycling process. And before I go into more detail on pure wash label, I would like to describe that recycling process. And I should say here that the process I'm describing is the typical one of the United States. However, that's something that varies from region to region. I want to say here that I'm describing the recycling process for a general area in the United States. Um, it can vary from region to region. However, most regions follow something similar to this. Assuming you're in a community that recycles with commingled recyclables, what that means is you just throw all of your recyclables into one bin. Um, the first step along the recycling path for these bottles will be at what's called a materials recovery facility, or a MRF. Here, those commingled recycles will be dumped onto a belt and through a variety of steps, they'll separate out the glass, the aluminum, any steel packaging, the paper and fiber product, and finally they'll get a stream of PET bottles and typically the rest of the plastics will go in a separate stream. Um, those PET bottles are then sent to what's called a PET reclaimer where they'll again do another sort to make sure they don't have any extra plastic they don't want and then uh, they will actually grind up the bottles or flake them and then those bottles go into what's called a flake wash. This wash step is to remove any residual food products, um, soda pop, anything else that's on those bottles that's not PET. Um, and this is where the pure wash jumps into action. Um, that wash bath is a hot caustic wash bath and that's where the adhesive on the pure wash breaks down um, and ultimately releases from that PET flake. Then because the face stock is a polypropylene which floats in water. Um, that label will be floated to the surface of that caustic wash and skimmed off along with the bottle caps um, and a lot of other fixtures that come along with the PET bottles. At this point, the PET flake sinks to the bottom and is able to be taken away and rinsed and wash and integrate it back into the PET manufacturing process. Now that we've described the recycling process, I'd like to take you through the journey of a pure wash label as it works its way through that recycling process. So with any packaging, it's, event, it's gonna start off with the manufacturing of both the rigid packaging as well as the label. Uh, we will be receiving the label materials from our supplier. We then convert it and print it and send it to the filler. Um, with PET bottles, often the PET resin will be delivered to the filler where they will actually blow the bottles if they do it in-house. These bottles are then filled, labeled, um, and they're able to be sent to the store shelves for the consumers to purchase. Once those consumers enjoy their product, that product goes to the recycling center uh, where, again, it goes through the process I described earlier of being sorted, um, flaked, cleaned, 
um, and the bottle caps and labels will get separated out here, leaving behind pure PET flake, which is then uh, free to be recycled back either into the PET stream to be a bottle again, or that flake could actually also be used back up in our liner manufacturing. So this just demonstrates how the pure wash label is able to help encourage a circular economy for PET. Now to zoom in more on that recycling process, we'd like to show you a demonstration of how the pure wash label actually functions in that caustic wash. seen how pure wash works I want to bring the 34% number back into the conversation as I mentioned it was going to be important and here's why I know a lot of you are aware um, potentially it's part of your job to be aware of the fact that a number of brands have commitments between 2025 and 2030 to get their PET containers up to 50 80 even 100 percent recycled PET now, that's not going to be possible for everyone to have 50% recycled PET bottles if we're only recycling 34% of our PET today, as we are today. So that's why we think it's very important to have label solutions like the Pure Wash as a standard to be able to up that recycling rate past the 35% so we can get to a future where we have a cir truly circular economy for PET. So we've covered a lot in a little bit of time, and as you can see, sustainability is not a black and white issue. So if you'd like to discuss this more, I'll be available in Inland Packaging Showroom at Pack Expo Connects. Thank you for your time today.